Playing almost all of your PC games without Windows is now a reality. There are stories all over the internet of people who have completely dumped Windows and are playing most of their Steam library without any hassle. And for those outliers, those games that aren't working yet, between Wine and Proton, every day someone somewhere is working on improving the compatibility of games on Linux. But let's say that you run into one of those games that isn't working. Picture this, you've installed an alternative operating system on your PC. You open up Steam, you click install on a game, and then you go to hit play, but nothing happens. Or the game launches and it's super broken. Well, today we'll go through some of the things you can do to troubleshoot that game. These methods have fixed a lot of games that are a little more sensitive to Proton. Some of these solutions are really easy. Some of them will require a little bit more work, but I wouldn't say that they're hard. But nothing in this video or on this channel will require a terminal. So the point being that this should be as beginner friendly as possible. These methods should work on all distributions, whether you're using Debian, Arch or Fedora, or any forks of either of those distributions. And there will be examples of different desktop environments with different distributions, just so everyone's on the same page. So let's get started. You've clicked play on that game, hoping for it to boot up as it would on Windows, and nothing happened. The first question should be, is this the first time you've clicked play since installing this game? So the amount of games that have worked just by clicking play a second time is pretty normal, both on Linux and Windows, because this isn't a Linux problem, this is a problem that happens with some games sometimes on every operating system. And it's important to point that out because if you have switched away from Windows and plan on using Linux, whether it be part-time or full-time for your gaming, you will probably be hyper-focused on looking for those little bugs or seeing what's compatible and what's not. So knowing that something exists on Windows and you've probably just never noticed it versus seeing it on Linux the first time and thinking, oh, it doesn't work, is kind of important to point out and make sure that you're aware of that too. But let's say that you've clicked play a few times and nothing has happened. Well, what's next? You'll want to check ProtonDB to check the compatibility of your game, but also to see if anyone else are having the same issues trying to get that game up and running on Linux. On the one hand, the community will document what they did to get that game running, and we'll go through some of those solutions in just a moment. But on the other hand, let's say that that game is completely broken and it's not happening anytime soon. Well, ProtonDB is also great for a time saver, so you don't have to scratch your head trying different things to get it working. You'll just know that that game isn't working and you'll either be patient and wait for it to get fixed or perhaps use it on your Windows computer if you still have one of those. But hopefully, if you've seen any of the videos on this channel, you've checked ProtonDB before you even installed a Linux distribution. Because if you actually sign in with Proton using your Steam credentials, you can see your entire library's compatibility at a glance so that you can set your expectations for what games will work and what games won't rather than searching them individually. But speaking of compatibility, one of the things that might hold you up, depending on the type of games you like to play, are live service games with anti-cheat. If you play anything like Apex Legends, Battlefield 6, or Destiny 2, then you'll have to ask the developers of that game why they hate privacy respecting operating systems to the point of purposely breaking them on Linux and banning people who try to get them working. Because the answer is definitely not cheaters. But if you're not sure if your favorite live service game falls into this category, well, there's a resource just for you. It's called, Are We Anti-Cheat Yet? And here you can see the worst offenders and also all the live service games that actually work without a problem on Linux. And more importantly, all the games that serve as an example that you don't need a kernel level anti-cheat to run your game, whether it be Windows or Linux. But there's an entire video on this channel about that already. So let's move on for now. Back to ProtonDB. You'll notice that on some game pages, people are recommending different versions of Proton. And if you're new to this space, you might be surprised to learn that there are different versions of Proton, which means you probably didn't know that you could even switch between them. So let's take a look at that now. So back over in Steam, 
hover over the game that you want to change the Proton version for. Right click on that and select Properties. Then in the left hand column, click on Compatibility. And there you'll see, force the use of a specific Steam player compatibility tool. This is a very long winded way of saying Proton because most games will be running through Proton rather than Wine directly. Wine being the foundation of Proton. So when you click that box, you'll see another section appear down below. And when you click on that section, you'll see a bunch of versions of Proton listed there. So you can select whichever one you want. Now, when you click play on that game, you'll see something else downloading before the game gets started. That is that version of Proton downloading for that game. But why is it that we just don't use the highest number version of Proton? Isn't the newest thing the best thing? Well, software is a little bit complicated, especially games. Proton is always improving, as I mentioned at the top of this video. But sometimes with all of those improvements, there can be things called regressions, meaning that you might have fixed something that wasn't working in 10 games, but it might break something in one of those other games. Valve does an incredible job at fixing those regressions to ensure that all games get the best compatibility. And this is why the newest version of Proton often is a beta version meaning that they're testing it out before they go into this stable version, which is a version that they're confident will work with just about everything. But sometimes your games will work better with very specific versions of Proton. And you'll see those versions of Proton listed in ProtonDB. So when you force the use of that version of Proton, that game will always boot with that version of Proton and you don't need to worry about it ever again. And then later on down the line, if the new version of Proton fixes that regression, then you're all set. But whichever path you pick here, so long as your game's up and running, that's all that really matters. But let's say that you've picked every single version of Proton in this list and clicked play, and the game still isn't booting. Well, you might notice that the version of Proton recommended on some pages on ProtonDB isn't always listed here. And that version has a GE next to it. So what is GE Proton? GE stands for Glorious Egg Roll. This isn't a version of Proton made by a company or a team. As far as I know, this is one guy. And his version of Proton has gotten a lot of games over the line when it comes to working on Linux. But how do we get that into Steam? Well, that's super easy. Whether you're on Manjaro, Mint, Bazite, or Fedora, all you need to do is go to your software center or App Store or Bazaar and search for Proton Up QT. And once you find it, click install. Once that's installed, open it up. It's a very simple and straightforward app. It should default to the location of your Steam install folder, meaning the place where Steam keeps all of its versions of Proton. If it's defaulted there, click on add version and then find any version of Proton GE that you wanna add. Once you've clicked on this button, it should start downloading. And then when we go back over to Steam, it should appear in the dropdown list. You might need to restart Steam in order for it to appear. But once it's in the dropdown menu, select it and click play, and you should be all good to go. This also works if you're using Lutris or any of the other options for installing alternative launches. All you need to do is change the location at the top of ProtonUpQt and then it will install that version of Proton into that program's folder for Proton versions. Also, Glorious Eggroll doesn't just have his own version of Proton, he has his own Linux distribution, which we are definitely going to look at on this channel at a later date. But let's say that no version of Steam's Proton or Glorious Eggroll's Proton is getting this game up and running. The next question would be, does this game have a mandatory launcher? For example, EA games that shouldn't need to connect to the internet in any way, shape or form, besides Steam verifying that you own the game, and yet insist on having the launcher there, even though it's entirely unnecessary. Cloud saves do exist on Steam, so I'm not gonna accept that as an argument either. What you'll often find with games with mandatory launches, and Ubisoft's in this pile as well, is that they'll work one day and break the next. This is often because the launcher has done some sort of update no one at EA or Ubisoft cares if they break that launcher for Linux, or as was the experience I had a few years ago, breaking it on Windows as well. But let's focus on the solution. If you own 
two copies of your game, one on the launcher and one on Steam. Then you have another avenue open to you. You can install the launcher directly to see if that solves your problem. If you're interested in giving that a try, I have an entire video exploring how to get EA installed on Linux. So if you think that might work for you and you own a second copy of that game on EA, then check out this video. A lot of those steps will also be similar to get Ubisoft working. I'll have an Ubisoft video later on in the piece as well. But I have seen games that refused to work on Steam and suddenly worked when the EA launcher was installed separately. Extremely annoying, especially when you're trying to keep your entire game library together, but better to have the avenue to play the game than have nothing at all. In fact, that's the entire reason that this video exists. But let's say that you've tried every version of Proton and this isn't a launcher problem as far as you can tell because maybe your game doesn't even have a launcher. Here's something else to consider. What distribution of Linux are you using? And specifically, what is that distribution based off? Distributions can actually play a crucial role into whether a game will run or not. This is due to the difference in the foundation's fundamental design, being the way that Debian, Arch and Fedora run the ship essentially, which could be a video in itself, but here's the short version. Speaking extremely broadly, Debian leans more towards stability, whereas Arch leans a lot more towards cutting edge. Fedora also leans a lot more towards that side as well. Again, it's a lot more complicated than that, but like I said, getting into the weeds would require its own separate video. And this is why SteamOS 2, which was made for the Valve console before the Steam Deck, was running on Debian, but the Steam Deck and SteamOS now runs on Arch. The primary difference here is the kernel. We've talked about the foundations of a Linux distribution before, but underneath Debian, Arch, and Fedora is the kernel. The kernel is the bedrock, the core, the center. And at this point in Linux kernel development, there are changes being made to the Linux kernel and improvements that directly improve games, which is excellent. But that also means that some games might not work on a Debian install where they might work on an Arch install. Now, I don't want you to take the wrong message away from this. This doesn't mean that you should abandon Debian altogether. I've had a Debian install run for over a year and all the games I played during that year were compatible with it. So Debian shouldn't be entirely ruled out. But I did have one game which wasn't working correctly, and that was Dead Island 2, when it was free on the Epic Games Store a few months ago at the time of filming. A video coming on how to get your Epic Games Store games working on Linux coming up soon as well. Once Dead Island 2 was booting, the menu was a little bit clunky, but I didn't think too much of it. It was once the game started playing that the cutscenes were dropping down to single frames per second with audio issues. So after trying different versions of Proton, including Glorious Eggroll's version of Proton, it was time to try a different distribution. And this is where Bazite came in. Installing Bazite on a separate machine, then installing Dead Island 2, suddenly the cutscenes started working correctly. So in this case, that could have been something to do with either the kernel or some of the other pieces of software within Bazite, which is based off Fedora, which is closer to Arch in that the software packed into that is a little bit more cutting edge. But I will say that the distribution I was using that was based off Debian was an older operating system. It hadn't been updated in quite some time as I was waiting for the newest version to release. More on that later. So maybe another Debian distribution with a newer kernel or newer software might have got that game over the line. But it might be worth considering for your specific use case whether that game would work. And if you don't mind the occasional hiccup or two that comes with cutting edge software, then maybe that will influence your decision in which distribution to pick. And one final tip for getting your games up and running. This is less about specific games and more about the occasional problems you'll run into. Let's say that you boot up your computer and you go to your software manager and you do updates, but then you boot up Steam and you go to boot up a game and either Steam doesn't recognize your Bluetooth controller or maybe there's no audio in your game. And this is assuming that it was working correctly before. See, some distributions will do updates and they'll do a refresh after they've rebooted. 
You've probably seen this on Windows too. Windows insists that you install those updates and restart when it tells you to restart rather than picking it yourself. But this is one of the benefits of freedom on Linux. You don't have to restart if you don't want to. So let's say that there was an update for those Bluetooth drivers. Well, that update is probably messing things up until you get a fresh boot. And multiple times a fresh boot has solved a Bluetooth problem with Steam and the various emulators not recognizing that controller. And the exact same goes for audio drivers as well. A quick restart later and they're all good to go. This is especially relevant if you're the sort of person who likes to put your computer to sleep instead of shutting it down every night as your computer probably has a few things ready to update. And another solution could be instead of booting your computer up and doing your updates and then getting on with it, maybe doing your updates just before you shut it down. But that will do for tips for this video. I hope that something in this video has helped you get some of your games working that were previously not working before. At the end of the day, if you're super desperate to play that one game, having Linux installed alongside Windows is perfectly acceptable, especially if you want the privacy of Linux and just Windows for that one game that can't seem to get its anti-cheat to not be kernel level. So maybe dual booting is an option for you. Hopefully one day Proton will get every game across the line. But until then, remember, as with all things computers, a little bit of patience goes a long way.